Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. This is question number four now from this P3, Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level at Excel uh, from the June 2021 exam. And this question here is about functions. And we're told about two functions, function f and function g. Function f is defined by 4x plus 6 over x minus 5, where x is an element of the real numbers and x cannot equal 5. So it's defined for all values that it's possible for it to be defined by 4. Because, of course, x can't equal 5 in this reciprocal function because x equals 5 makes the denominator 0 and therefore it causes the function to be undefined. g of x is defined as 5 minus 2x squared for values of x which are all the real numbers um, now if it was left at that it could have been defined for all values of x 5 minus 2x squared is defined for all value of x however this domain has been restricted to all the values of x which are less than or equal to zero now sometimes a lot of students ignore these little symbols after the functions uh, but they're really really important in this um, especially when we can come to um, you know, A-level maths. It's very, very important. They, they will affect the answers for um, other parts of this question. Okay, so it's important for us to take note of these facts. So now, first of all, it says, solve the equation f of gx equals 3. What does that mean? Well, that means that we've got to take the function g and substitute it into the function f, equate that expression to 3, and then solve that equation that's formed. Okay, so f of gx is like doing this. It's like taking the function g of x and substitute it in, inside the function f. And then we have to equate that to 3 and solve the equation that's going to come out from this. So the function g of x, as we can see here, is 5 minus 2x squared. So basically, they're asking us to take the function f and substitute inside it 5 minus 2x squared and equate that to 3. Okay, just as if I was if I was going to do f2, I would take the 2 and substitute that instead of x wherever I see it in the function f. So if I want to find f of gx, I've got to find I've got to take whatever g of x is and substitute that in place of the x in the function f. So instead of 4x, I'm going to have 4 times 5 minus 2x squared and then plus 6 over instead of x, 5 minus 2x squared and then minus 5. And I have to equate that to 3 and solve this equation. So let's just simplify this. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I can just cancel those ones out. Um, and then I've got minus 2x squared. So if I multiply both sides by minus 2x squared, if I multiply both sides by minus 2x squared, that cancels on this side. And I'm left with 4 times 5, which is 20. And 4 times minus 2x squared, which is... I was put back it there because multiply the whole of that side by minus 2x squared. Anyway, 4 times minus 2x squared, which is minus 8x squared. And I've got plus 6 equals minus 6x squared. Now, I can see I've got here 26 minus 8x squared equals negative 6x squared. Now, I see I have got a quadratic, but there's only an x squared term, no x term. So I could just add, x, add 8x squared to both sides leaving with 2x squared on this side, divide both sides by 2, so I have 13 equals x squared, and then find the square root of both sides, so I can say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13. Now this is where these details are really important, because the function g of x is only defined for values of x which are negative. So therefore, there is no value of x of um, positive root 13, which can be a solution to uh, you know, where g of x is substituted into the function f, okay, because g of x does not exist for negative values of x. So what I must do is I have to write x equals negative square root of 13. That is the only solution to this answer. As uh, we can say, as x is less than or equal to zero in the function g of x therefore x must be equal to the negative square root of 13 okay because there's no values of x that i can put in the composite function which can't exist in any of the original functions okay so that is the answer to part a so again this is a very these um 
details are very important for us in especially in p3 okay in, in you know a level maths in ig maths we normally ignore these kind of things but in a level maths are very important they affect the answers uh, quite drastically like in this case if you wrote x equals plus or minus root 13 you would lose a mark for sure okay so that's answer to four part a now for four part b we have the function f of x we have to find the inverse function so this is the function i've written up here I've just copied it over and we've got to find the inverse function of this. Now to find the inverse function, the first step is always to write y instead of f of x, sort of, instead of the function. So y equals 4x plus 6 over x minus 5. Now the second step is I write instead of y x and instead of x y. I'm not rearranging, I'm just changing everywhere I see y, I change it for x. Everywhere I see x, I change it for y. And then I've got to make y the subject of this formula, and that will then be the inverse function. So I've got to multiply both sides by y minus 5 to get rid of the uh, fraction. So x times y minus 5 times x equals 4y plus 6. Now I've got to bring the y's together because I'm going to make y the subject. So x, y minus 4y equals, you can say, 5x plus 6. Add 5x to both sides. I can take y as a common factor of these. So I have y times x minus 4 equals 5x plus 6. And then I've got to divide both sides by x minus 4. So I have 5x plus 6 divided by x minus 4. So that is the inverse function. The inverse function for f of x is equal to 5x plus 6 over x minus 4. Now the original function is not restricted apart from its asymptote. So the inverse function will also be an element of all real numbers apart from its asymptote which is when x is equal to 4 so x cannot equal 4 that should be written down as a condition for the domain okay you should define it by its domain as the original function is defined by its domain so we, we should write that x can't equal 4 and x is an element of the real numbers okay so that's the answer to part b okay you'll notice also that um if you were to draw this function okay if you draw the original function there would be an asymptote at y equals four okay if you were to make this into an improper fraction you would get four plus something over x minus five that's how it would be because you can see that this goes into that four times so you'd have x y equals four would be one of the asymptotes Okay, just like x equals 5 is an asymptote. So it will look something like like this. Something like that. So you can see that the, um, the, the range of the original function is the same as the domain of the inverse function. And the, rain, the, the, the range of the original function includes all values of y except for y equals 4. So the domain is like, you know, the same. So the... the 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 domain of the inverse function includes all values for, except for x equals 4. Okay, so a little side point there. Um, explained later on. I'll explain in other questions where that's relevant. It's not really relevant to this question so much. Basically, the important thing is when you write down your answer, you should write down the values for which it is defined. If this was restricted, okay, in any way, like they said x is for example, greater than 5 or less than 5 or something like that, then this would also follow on as being restricted. And then making a sketch would be a good idea for you to try to understand how it's restricted. But in this particular question, we don't need to go that far because it's not restricted apart from just the regular asymptote. So similarly here, this is restricted only for the asymptote. Otherwise, all real numbers are valid for this. So that's question 4b. Now for question 4, part c. Okay, for part C says sketch and label on the same axes the curve with equation y equal g of x and the curve with equation y of the inverse of g of x. Show on your sketch the coordinates of the points where each curve meets or cuts the coordinate axes. Okay, so we've got to sketch the curve y equals um, g of x and y equals inverse of g of x. Now we don't actually have to um, find the equation of the inverse of g of x because by drawing the original function, it's easy for us to draw the inverse function on the same axis. So we know that g of x 
is equal to 5 minus 2x squared. And x is an element of the real numbers. And x is less than or equal to 0. So I want to find where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. It crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. It crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. So when y equals 0, you have 5 minus 2x squared equals 0. So you have 2x squared equals 5. So we have um, x squared equals 5 over 2. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Let me write this in this rational form. I'm sure it wouldn't matter. But in this rational form, this would be root 5 over root 2. And then you have to rationalize the denominator, which gives you plus or minus root 10 over 2. So there's two places where it would cross the x-axis, if it could cross it at two places. Okay, and we'll see in a minute how that won't work. And then we got y, when x equals 0, y is equal to 5 minus 2 times 0 squared, uh, squared. So y is equal to 5. So it passes through the point 0, 5. And here it passes through the point 0 and minus root 2 over, sorry, not 0. It passes through the point minus root two, 10 over 2, 0. Because it can't pass through positive root 10 over 2 because this is only defined for values of x less than or equal to 0. So it crosses the y-axis at 5, and it stops there. So I'm going to draw a circle and a closed. It stops at 5, and it crosses the x-axis at negative root 10 over 2. And it is a parabola, like a quadratic. So it's going to go something like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it first. And then put these things in the right place so that, oops, that's better. Okay, um, yeah, that looks okay. That's like a parabola, and it's crossing at 5 on the y-axis and at minus root 10 on the x-axis. It can't continue on this side because x is less than or equal to 0. Now, how do we draw the inverse function? Well, in the inverse function, the y and x... Um, axes are swapped around so for the inverse function you know the x values become the y values and the y values become the x values so the point 0 5 becomes a point 5 0 and the point negative root 10 over 2 0 becomes uh, the point 0 and negative root 10 over 2 so it's going to cross at uh, 5 0 and it's going to cross at negative root 10 over 2 on this side. So it's going to, it's not going to continue on this way. It's going to stop here just like that stops there. So it'll be like a closed circle. And it will look something like this. Okay, I'm trying to draw it properly. Yeah, so it looks something like this. Okay, so that's like a parabola. It's like a reflection of the original in the line y equals x. Okay reflection in the line y equals x and you can see they intersect on the line y equals x all right so this doesn't continue on this way it should be a bit more curved here because um let me just redraw that part i'm sure it would be fine if we did that but i just want to make it look a bit more realistic because this is this is like the the vertex so it's kind of this is like the the top of its curve it's going to look something like that that's a bit better oops don't have it curving inwards here either. Okay, so I'll just um, continue like this. Something like that. Okay, that's a bit better. Okay, I'm being a bit fussy here. But you shouldn't have it curving back into itself or back into itself there either. That will cause you to lose marks. Okay, so there we have the, this is y equals the inverse function of x. And this is y equals f of x. So they asked us to sketch and label on the same axis the curve with the equation y equals g of, oops, sorry, g of x, not f of x. Sorry about that, that's g of x. One second. Okay, so that's y equals g of x, and that's y equals inverse g of x. 
Okay, so, um, and the curve with equation y equals inverse g of x, show on your sketch the coordinates of the points where each curve meets or cuts the coordinate axes. Okay, so we've got all of those things. There's two curves drawn, labeled, places where they meet the, the y and the x-axis, and everything is there. And that's three marks for that. And we're done, and we finish with question number four from this paper. Thank you for watching, and see you soon. As I was, um, just mentioned, that the other questions from P3 from this particular paper can be found on the link that you'll see at the end of the video. Other questions about functions in P3 you can find in the link over here in this area. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link over here. At the top of the page is a card taking you to another P3 paper. And if you would like to see other papers like P1, P2, P4, S1, M1, also IGCSE papers, look in the description on the uh, bottom of the video. You'll see um, links to those other papers. Thank you for watching and see you soon.